do not do that, you retain between 5 and 10%, which I think is a pretty good advert for doing it, because I've got no great interest in waiting 55 minutes of my hour. I've got, not got that many hours. Any, does that clarify? Convinced? Um, so our students that we're working with, um, they're being delivered this model. We also work on exam performance state, which is not unlike learning state. Sometimes it's the same. Sometimes they have different states for exam performance. Again, it's a core piece of NLP, which is about anchoring state. Uh, so state elicitation, we say, okay, tell us a time when you, when was your last really great exam? When, when did you really perform, really feel uh, like it was, you were absolutely in the zone? And they'll say, okay, yeah, I've got it. I said, and, and then what word describes that? And my common words might be uh, focused or confident. And then we actually drive that state <coughs> and they get a feel of that state, we get them to recognize the state and anchor the state. We also sometimes use something called visual squash, so they may have a conflicting state. Um, because we always check out saboteurs in this on the basis that having educated in a conventional way at school and in, including medical school, they are far more likely to go ahead, keep going with the same processes. This is quite a challenge for them. So we ask them, how are you going to sabotage it? And if we come up with where we think is a, almost certainly an active saboteur within them, we will get them to identify the states. And we do something called visual squash, which actually just recognizes two places for them and get these two places to come together. And we're usually, I would say, successful in at least 90% of those cases. And then we do something called future pacing, which is that not only do we actually lock in the state, but we actually take them. So as you now notice yourself entering your next, what's called AMK in medicine, as you enter that exam hall, just notice what it's like to be with those resources of confidence or with focus. And as you sit down focused, just explore how wonderful it is to be focused as you do this exam. And notice focus as it allows you to perform this exam. We also actually get them to dress accordingly. We get everything congruent with that state. So as you notice confident, just notice what you're wearing as you appear confident. So we used to have students who would turn up in their jeans and t-shirt for the most important exam they have during the year. No, they need to be dressed congruently. The whole process needs to have congruence. The results purely from resource state anchoring in our last cohort, um, we met with 15 students who had all failed their last test. And we met with them a maximum of three weeks and up to one week prior to their test. So in that time, they really didn't have any, they couldn't change their learning style. They couldn't particularly do any more work because the, the kind of test it is is a test of long-term memory. Of those 15, one had no change in performance. Of the other 14, the change in performance ranged from 10% up to one guy with a dramatic 45% improvement in performance. Now, I really don't know of any other model I can imagine that can change performance in that kind of way. The guy who actually um, had the 45% went from unsatisfactory to excellent grade in one exam. I'd just like to revisit really the variety of 
techniques around this that we use during the interviews. And it really encompasses, I wrote this, and then actually the last two days I've been thinking, and there really isn't, I, I got up to 25 different techniques that we use from NLP. Um, it just is now seamless. I know Andy said um, he doesn't like you know, the term master practitioner, and I actually don't either. But I do like the term mastery of your art. And I think one of the key things about once you start to deliver this kind of model, and you've been doing it 10 years, you start to get mastery, which is about unconscious competence. You start to become so good, you don't know you're doing it. Nor does students. So that is the key, is when you're working with these techniques, is so it becomes seamless. Just probably just share a few um, specific students who we changed. I think the most dramatic one for me was a girl who came in and she was, I mean, she was in tears when she arrived in the interview because these students are often, quite often years three and four, which is towards the end of the course. And there is the potential they will be removed from the course, which means they'll be left with a, a basic honours degree in, in clinical science, but it means they can never practice as a doctor. And we, she had a complete lack, lack of, loss of confidence. She felt worthless. Um, she had no idea how she could possibly pass this exam. It was, it was lost to her. And one of the questions we ask is, okay, um, so, what kind of doctor do you see yourself being in 10 years' time? Now, that does quite a few things. That's called a future base. That it almost is making the presumption they are going to be a doctor, which is what we do presume in the interviews, because there are very few students who are not capable of passing. And she said, well, um, just, I know I'm, it's really important. I care for patients. I do my best for them. Um, that I have real connection with my patients. There are really strong, powerful values for me that I need to do my best for them in this world. And she was really identifying at, at, at uh, DILT's level at an identity issue. We actually had to do no more. That drove her. A smile that came across her face as she realized that that level of professionalism, that drive, it drove everything on through. I met her in, the, she was in one of my year three groups. And I asked her about four weeks later, and she just, every time she came to the group, she just had a big smile on her face. She transformed, her ANK results transformed, she transformed as a human being. And that was at identity level. We, we actually work at all different levels uh, in our interviews, and again, I can't go into DILT's model today, there isn't time. But these are incredibly powerful strategies for shifting people, changing people, in a matter of minutes. We do have one and a half hours. That's all we have with them. And yet, in one and a half hours, I would say we significantly, dramatically change three quarters to four-fifths of our students. Okay. That's a decent advert. So, uh, my guess is we go into questions, and as I noticed, you did have some, or you wrote down, or you have in some way prepared something in your minds. Has anyone not had their question answered? Tony, you, you go, um, you've given ex um, a, a lot of evidence of different learning styles uh, in, in, in pupils. Is this now, in, because you're very much at the end of the learning process for the, for the, for the pupil or the, the student, is now this information that, and research you're gathering at the end, 
now going to be fed forward to the front end of the, the learning process when students actually first come into the medical school and, and how you can work and add value earlier on in the process um, to maybe reduce the amount of students that yep. you work with at, 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 in a failing state? Well, the interesting bit is Tony Lewis, who's now just retired, at induction at uh, Peninsula Medical School, delivers his learning piece. Of 10 students asked, for every 10 students asked, certainly by year two, only one can ever remember having received that. So I guess what you're fighting against is culture in that they have these are virtually uni universally triple A star students. Certainly A and A star. They've never failed an exam. They've always performed. They're 10, 10 A star GCSE students. They've never failed anything. And the problem we, they have, we have with them, is convincing them that their historical patterns of learning actually aren't the best. Because when they come into medicine, they are now going to be stressed to a much higher level in terms of the educational requirements required. So I guess it's true of whether you're teaching in schools, in colleges, anywhere you're teaching, is can you get into and interrupt, in some way disrupt that old culture? And my guess is that you have to get into some kind of rapport model with them, and we have to keep re-examining how best we can make connection with mass groups of students in order to create that kind of change. Um, but at the moment, it's repair work. So we have to wait till they fail, and then we get involved. So did I meet all your learning needs? This is a great model for anything you do. So if you, uh, are, as I say, involved in any sports pursuits, hobbies, apply it. Just go back home, okay. Do I wanna do this this evening? Or do I wanna go to the gym? Oh, I wanna go to the gym. Right, don't learn. Don't pursue it. Wait until you're in the right place. And when you're in the right place, get into your performance state, anchor into it, and then go through the basic principles of how you learn. The effectiveness there's a woman at um, Truro, she's a consultant nephrologist, and she decided to do a law degree in parallel with her job as a consultant nephrologist and three young children she's bringing up. And she is getting distinctions at every level in her law degree using this model. So in your opinion, these techniques can be used to learn anything? Anything. Anything. Um, and to be honest, <clears throat> must be. I mean, if, if you're not doing it, mm. you are wasting a vast amount of your time. The other part to it, which I is that it's got a very positive learning feedback cycle, because you're always looking at what you already know. Um, it's uh, you, because you set down, what do I already know about this? and then you move forward. But because you're learning in a very powerful and clean environment, and it's set for learning, it's just, you, you are being professional about your learning. I do not believe if you went into anything else in your job or anything else you wanted to do, you would apply such sloppiness as most people do in their way in which they learn. Any more? Thank you.